I have got some awesome parenting ideas that I 100% recommend. Keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, I thought I would share some of the parenting ideas that I have modified from me growing up or things that I've just kind of come up with on my own that I think are really important to incorporate in your own parenting and building, you know, like your little ones up for success. Now, before I get into these, I do want to start by just saying that in no way are these 100% effective 100% of the time. We are raising little humans and they have imperfections and they have attitudes and they have emotions. And it's not like we are programming a robot to just always behave in the same way whenever we try these different things. So just keep that in mind when you are listening to some of these. Uh, I think in the long run, they definitely pay off and they are very helpful, but they don't work all the time. So one of the big things that I have tried to incorporate as far as like how I talk to my daughter is using problem solver language. Now, a long time ago, I don't have this on film, unfortunately, but I had a little like Mother's Day balloon and it had helium in it, it floated to the ceiling and you know, my daughter and I would play this game where I would be holding the balloon and then I'd be like a chew and I'd let go and the balloon would float up to the ceiling and be stuck there. And I'd be like, oh no, oh no, we have a problem. How can we fix it? And she would pull her little slide that has like, you know, three or four steps. And she was just tall enough to reach the ribbon, pull it back down and hand it to me. And then I would sneeze again and the balloon would flow off in some other direction. And we'd be like, oh no, we need a problem solver. And she would go drag her little uh, slide with the ladder to the right position so that she would be able to reach the balloon and bring it back down. And ever since that day, we've kind of incorporated this problem solver language. And as a mathematician, I think it's important to kind of use that language in our day to day life because, you know, most people, I don't want to get into the whole math thing, but <laughs> that's for another video. I think that, you know, a lot of the times when we are a presented with a problem that we don't know how to solve or something like that, it's very easy to feel intimidated and want to just not deal with it at all. But if we bring up the little problems throughout the day that, oh, let's think about how we can solve this problem, I think it's going to be helpful not only in like the STEM field, but just in life in general. Wow, you're a problem solver. How are you going to get the other one, Aubrey? How are we going to solve the problem? That's a good idea. <laughs> The other reason why I really like this language is it helps when your little one is whining. So if you are always using this problem solver language, then if they are having like a little episode of whining, there's been a few times where it's worked very quickly for me and sometimes not so quick. But I say, you know, is whining solving the problem? You know, Aubrey, is, is, is whining solving the problem? What's the problem? How can we solve it? And it immediately, in some moments, like changed. She's like, no, no, it's not helping. And then we would fix the problem that, you know, whatever it was, um, if she wanted to get a certain toy and she couldn't reach it or, you know, whatever, it, whatever the problem was, I redirected her attention to what the problem actually was and, you know, tried to show her, hey, whining isn't doing anything to solve this. So let's try to think of a different solution. And so that's one of the big things that I've tried to incorporate is the use of the problem solver language. And it really does help in most cases when it comes to a whining episode. If Aubrey, my daughter, has gotten into like this huge blowout, it's it's kind of harder to calm her down. <laughs> but I do still try to incorporate that language. <laughs> Aubrey, what's the problem? 
Are, can we solve the problem? Guys, it's time to get to school, guys. Time to get to school. Okay. Time to get to school. Aubrey, look at mommy. Did you solve the problem? And did whining solve the problem? No. No. What solved the problem? Happy fix the problem. Another type of language choice that I have modified from when I was growing up is saying good choice and bad choice. So when I was growing up, my mom would always say bad business if we did something that was not, you know, pleasing to her or, you know, just it wasn't a good behavior to have. And I liked that because it wasn't saying like bad girl or bad boy. Our children are made in the image and likeness of God. They are made to be good. And I don't want my daughter feeling like she is a bad person, a bad girl. Uh, she is a good girl, but sometimes she makes bad choices. And I have really tried to help her identify what is a good choice and what is a bad choice. So one time, for example, when we were at the park, she would pick up the wood chips and she'd throw it like at a projectile that it was not, you know, the best to do in public where there's other kids around or, you know, you just don't want them throwing the wood chips out. So instead I said, Aubrey, that's a bad choice. And I said, here's a good choice. If you want to pick up the wood chips, we just drop it. And I tried to give her that option so that she could still pick up the wood chips, but when she wanted to let them go, she could make a good choice by dropping it instead of making a bad choice and throwing it in someone's direction. And because I use this phrase or these phrases so often, she identifies good choices and bad choices. So if we're on a walk and she sees like dog poop, she's like, bad choice, puppy. Or, you know, if someone were to hit her like in the playground, she'd be like, so-and-so hit me and that's a bad choice. Um, and so it's nice to be able to see you know, her identify, there are, you know, good behaviors and bad behaviors. And even just the other night, I wish I had filmed it again, but I don't, you know, break out my, my camera all the time to capture these moments. I had cleaned something up and she's like, good choice, mommy. Now you can get a candy <laughs> as like a reward. And I do give her some, some treats here and there. I try to teach her in addition to good choices and bad choices, there's good consequences and bad consequences. And so um, I just try to be very repetitive in that so that she learns the difference between you know her, her actions and the effects of her actions. Another parenting idea that I really like is asking my daughter if she would like my help when, she, when she's cleaning up a mess or with a task that she might have some difficulty with. And I do this specifically because I think it's a good quality to have for yourself. So like if I go to someone's house, I'm it's a good idea for me to ask them, hey, would you like some help? And it's demonstrating that for her. And similarly, sometimes when I'm doing a task or I'm cleaning up or I'm baking, she'll come up and say, do you need my help, mommy? And so it's really teaching her that when we have a task that is either favorable or unfavorable, it's polite to ask someone if they need your help and it helps avoid unnecessary tantrums. So if I were to just say, you need to clean up your toys, clean them all up, and then I just sit back and do nothing to help or I go and do something else, my daughter is more likely to experience some type of a tantrum because she doesn't wanna do everything by herself. And so if I'm willing to help, it makes the whole experience a little bit more enjoyable and quicker. If there is a task, however, that I would really like for her to do by herself, I slightly modify my language. I ask her, would you like some help? or can you do it all by yourself? And this gives her, you know, her little tiny two-year-old, three-year-old voice, you know, the ability to say, no, I can do it by myself. And she can go ahead and clean up her mess or whatever. But if she would like some help and, you know, I want to avoid an extra unnecessary tantrum, then I can go ahead and help her if she really needs it. For the most part, recently, I have been using this phrase when I'm asking her to begin our prayer. So being Catholic, we start our prayers off with like the sign of the cross. And that is something that she, I know, can do by herself. And sometimes she's just not in the mood to pray or not in the mood to say grace. And I'd really like her to, you know, participate with our family when we're saying grace. So I ask her, would you like some help to do the sign of the cross or can you do it all by yourself? 
And sometimes she resists, but other times she's like, no, I can do it by myself. And then she'll actually make the sign of the cross without me having to help her. I think another parenting idea that is very useful and sometimes hard to remember is when you don't want a no for an answer, don't give a no as an option. So if I want to change my daughter's diaper, I won't say, hey, you know, can I change your diaper? Because that leaves the answer up to be a no. And then if you really need to change your daughter's diaper or your child's diaper, then you kind of rejected their response of no, I don't want my diaper changed. And so if no isn't an option, don't make it out to be. So instead, for me, sometimes changing Aubrey's diaper, we're still kind of potty training and that's a whole nother story. Uh, but you know, I have to change her diaper and sometimes she won't let me change her in a certain location, but I let her pick where she wants her diaper changed. So I say, oh, Aubrey, would you like your diaper changed here or there? Uh, you know, referencing a certain location in the room. Or I say, Aubrey, show me where you want me to change your diaper. Because it's going to happen anyways. But this option at least gives her a little bit more control over the situation so that she doesn't fight back as much. The last three things are kind of just bonus things that I have tried to incorporate recently and I really like and plan on incorporating in the future as well. So the first is storing the children's like plates and bowls and utensils in a cupboard or drawer that the little ones can get a hold of so that they can help set the table. Right now we're living at my parents' house so I don't have have, like my kitchen totally planned out yet because we don't know where we're gonna stay but there is a nice little cupboard that is designated as like the kid cupboard and Aubrey knows to go there to get her cups if she wants a drink she knows to go there if she wants a plate or you know whatever and she's even able to reach our silverware drawer where she grabs our forks or our knives even they're they're dull don't worry uh, and, you know, I'll ask her, can you get two forks, one for mommy and one for you? And then she'll go and she'll get that. And I really just like how she is able to be helpful. And that is some like a small little task if they're plastic bowls that they're not going to break anything. And she's fully capable of taking care of that herself, helping set the table. And she really has a role in whatever kitchen activity we're going to be doing. I also really try to incorporate the idea that before we play with something new, we have to clean up our messes. And here's where I would ask, you know, like, would you like mommy to help or can you do it all by yourself? Or just, would you like some help cleaning up this mess so that we can play with this other toy that you wanna play with? In doing this, I've noticed that Aubrey likes to keep things tidy and it does make it a lot easier at the end of the day because most of the messes have been already addressed and cleaned up and we just have a small little, you know, most recent activity mess to clean up before it's nighttime. Not to mention it creates a really good habit for her because then she won't be creating disasters that never get cleaned up. And the last little parenting technique or idea that I really love incorporating and I think is really beneficial for the little ones is incorporating music or some type of song when you're cleaning up or doing an activity. If you have a smart device like the Alexa system, you can go ahead and use that to play some music. And specifically, one of our favorites is the cleanup song or going on a bear hunt is also just a fun activity. It doesn't need to be associated with cleaning up. And sometimes just having that music is really beneficial. I know that for me, I'm always in a better mood cleaning up if I'm listening to music rather than just having nothing. And so even if Aubrey doesn't want like the device to sing the cleanup song, sometimes she wants me to sing it. And so I will sing a cleanup song that is similar to that one or I'll make up my own and just try to make the whole experience a little bit more enjoyable. So these are just some of the main ideas that I've incorporated in my parenting so far that I really like for my little toddler. Obviously, it's gonna be different when she gets to be a teenager and beyond, but you know, I think starting young is gonna be very helpful and we can use the same type of language uh, or ideas at least in how we talk in the future when she grows up. Let me know if any of these ideas are new to you or you like how they've been modified from maybe an experience that you've had growing up down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys are new. I'd love to have you stick around and check out all of my motherhood content. I pretty much cover it all because there are so many roles that a mother has to take on. Don't forget to hit that like button and I'll catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, 
That may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.